All right. It is great to have you here. Good to be uh, here. Why don't you, uh, for everybody, tell us a little bit about uh, your role and about what Expedia is all about. Sure. So I'm John White, as mentioned, and I run product strategy. I've been with the business now for 11 years. Um, I started uh, by picking up the phone, handling residential ISP calls, uh, worked my way into an engineer, and that's when we started actually doing a lot of managed services for customers. So I was a principal engineer building out um, services like backups as a service and uh, firewall as a service back in the day. I transitioned that to solution architecture and now product strategy. I set the direction of all of our future looking products as well as what we're doing to update our uh, existing products to make them more applicable for the future. That's great. So. Um Help me uh, help the, everyone here understand the relationship that you've had with, uh, with Juniper over time. Yeah, so Expedient, um, you know, as a company, we focus on IT as a service. Uh, that's what we do. I mean, we work with the customers so that they have a close relationship with us. We're that local data center provider for them, that local cloud provider, and they buy services, you know, from us in portions. In the beginning days, we took SSG firewalls, uh, put the big SSG firewalls in there, the big monolithic device, we put it out there and we sold out chunks of that to our customers, because everybody needs a firewall. Every customer coming in needed a firewall. Well, that continued to grow. We went from the SSGs to the ISGs. The ISGs uh, started introducing virtualization concepts in there, and that was huge, because as we were growing customers, we started seeing IP conflicts, we were starting to see security issues, because you know, one auditor would want this, one auditor would want this, so we, we had to create you know, some sort of separation of our customers there. We transitioned that to the SRX line, and everything went great there as well. Um, you know, things were rocking and rolling. We knew what we wanted as a product. It just wasn't there as a technology yet. And uh, so we were working with Juniper, just not on the firewall line. We also use the EX line for all top, top of rack switches. And then the QFX line powers all of our cloud infrastructure. So you were talking about the, you know, the original way of moving from a, a, a monolithic device to a device where virtualization was inside the box. Correct. And then there's been some pretty fundamental transitions that, that have happened post that yeah. with, uh, with the virtual SRX. Can you share with yeah. us a little bit of what's, uh, what's happening there? Yeah, so we were in EBC uh, probably about two years ago, right? And the, uh, the product team came in and they were talking to us about this VSRX that they're working on in the lab. So it's taking the SRX functionality that we knew and loved that worked for us and doing it inside of a virtual instance inside of VMware. Um, right away, we jumped in with the product team and we started working with them on some of the alpha releases and the beta releases. So we had our principal engineers working with Juniper for quite some time so that when this thing was ready to go prime time, we were ready to respond as well because we had the customer base already asking and demanding for this. Right. So it sounds like a, a great uh, aspect of, of working closely together, an element of what I would call co-creation. So Absolutely. making sure that we understood your business requirements and then we were feeding them back into the product on a regular basis. Absolutely. Uh, it's key and, and part of what we've done. So how long have you been offering the, the VSRX as a service? Um, at the end of the month, it'll be one year. And uh, in that one year, we've deployed out 60 clusters. The last time I checked, I checked uh, actually yesterday when I was on the plane right here. But we have 60 customer, customers on it running today, uh, running across all of our 11 data centers. Excellent. That's great. So, you know, has this technology evolution from physical to virtual inside of physical to completely virtual, has it enabled you to come up with any net new services that would have just been incomprehensible a few years ago? Yeah, so one of the big things our customers were always demanding is, is and it was really a support issue that we had too, was you know, they, they know firewalls. They had firewalls most likely on their premise. They wanted to make those you know, little changes themselves. Um, when we were in the big you know, shared kind of monolithic model, it didn't really work like that. So the VSRX environment allowed us to give that co-managed firewall to them. If they wanted to create custom security policies, they could. Um, another cool thing we were playing around with in the labs, and uh, we were grateful that Juniper enabled this, is the BGP aspect um, inside of the VSRX. So one of the cool things that we did, and one of the principal engineers, Brian Gubish, he, he actually worked this out, and I was pretty amazed when he did, but he said, you know what? We use VMware's um, Site Recovery Manager today. We're doing that SAN to SAN replication, so we're taking that active site and we're, we're replicating it to a secondary site. What if we just include the VSRXs inside of this and we automate some of those networking things that are just kind of painful to do when you have to go from that, in, you know, running from a primary site to a secondary site? 
So we got it working inside of a lab, and uh, you know things went great. So you basically we created this this big red button that everybody wants. So we have inside of our um, inside of our customer portal that you can actually go click that button, and everything's automated for you. So if you had VPN tunnels up and running, you had websites running, mm -hmm. you know that have DNS and IP addresses assigned to them, everything shifted with you. So your virtualization. Um, your servers that you've done, your network appliances, your load balancers, SSL, VPN, everything goes from living in one data center, replica replicating across a 10 gig network, to another data center in a matter of minutes. This is something that businesses have struggled with over for a while. Virtualization helped this story out for sure because it kind of separated the actual hardware from the operating system, but that networking piece was always a little bit of a struggle. This we made it pretty easy for people to go from one site to another. Have you started offering that service to your customers? We did, we just launched it in November. Um, we have um, now three customers running inside of it today. They love hitting that big red button. We actually don't know when they're running it in production or when they're running in the secondary site. Since all of our data centers are meshed together with 10 gig fiber, it makes it nice and easy for them to you know, go from running it in Pittsburgh, running it into Boston. Um, we actually start to see customers proactively move their environment because they're getting the same level of service either site. So they can just have it live in Boston, all of a sudden, oh no, we see a snowstorm coming, let's move it to Indianapolis, the other side of the, uh, the, the expedient presence. That's fantastic. And so is there a name that you have for, uh, for this? Yeah, we call the whole suite itself push button disaster recovery. So really, because the push button disaster recovery is a suite, and when I say a suite, because it's really marrying a whole bunch of technology together. It's the Juniper VSRX, right, that's enabling the network. It's the VMware um, platform as a cloud, so the, the vSphere environment, as well as then Site Recovery Manager on top of it, and then it's obviously living inside of the Expedient Data Center to kind of handle that network piece. All right, I, I kind of, uh, I think of that as the Office Depot easy button for the, disaster recovery. I actually suggested a big red button with like a cool audible alarm on the website, but the developer said no. But. All right. Maybe I'll talk them into it. I can, I can understand why they may not want that. Um, so with, the, with regards to the, to the virtual SRX, you know, you think about, there, clearly there's some, some business benefits to automating that infrastructure. Have you seen any other, any other benefits from automating out the virtual SRX for you or your customers? Yeah, so both sides of it. We really look at automation in two different ways. We look at the automation to how fast we can deliver that service, mm -hmm. um, and we look at how we can keep that service in compliance. So on the front end, on the delivery side, we took something that used to you know, deploy out of firewall. It took days to weeks to do it. We actually have it all automated, um, utilizing the VMware's vRealize suite to basically, we click a button, we add a few IP addresses, it goes out, it grabs the VLAN that it needs, and you have a firewall cluster up in minutes. Um, on the compliance side of it, it makes our support team you know, really happy that they can you know, use one console in that space and change all passwords or update all the firmware. So our lives are getting easier because really we did create a little bit of a problem by ourselves. I mean, we used to only have 11 clusters of firewalls. Now we have 60 just virtual ones. So there's a lot more work there that you would look, you know, that would typically look to get done. But now since the automation piece makes it nice and easy. So you can relax easy on the weekend. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't have to worry about looking, looking under my car to see if anybody's there because I just made them build 40 firewalls in a day. Yeah, life is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bomb-proof disaster recovery. Exactly, exactly. All right, that's good to know. Um, you know what, are the, what are the, as far as customer adoption, you have 60 now. Yeah. You know, what do you see for the future of, of physical firewalls? Is there a place for that? Or are they all going to go virtual at some point? We still use physical firewalls for some of the high-end traffic that needs to get done. When we're talking about running gigabits per second through you know, VPN, you still have to have some of the, the, the higher end firewalls. We are working with Juniper to start to play around with running and more traffic inside of this. So the virtual firewalls are definitely gonna kind of take over. Everybody we had running in that monolithic architecture is getting migrated into pairs of VSRXs. Right. So we see a great growth rate, um, you know, just happening kind of organically as well as then just new customer add-ons. Absolutely, that's great. So what do you, what do you see as the future for, for security and, and virtualization? Wow, so those are two big uh, open loaded questions. The security stuff is, is pretty interesting. I mean, I think it's, uh, after some of the year's events, it's all safe to say that uh, security might not be happening the way you think it is as a consumer. So I think security needs to start happening. I mean, we hear about all these bigger businesses having all these breaches and issues. Um, the truth of the matter is there's a lot of small to medium businesses that are having those breaches too, they don't hit the news. 
the, you know, the thought of security in the, in the day where you put a fire firewall up there and it's a perimeter-based security, it doesn't really make sense anymore. Um, you need to, if you're having anything in your security world that's static, that doesn't make sense anymore. It needs to be dynamic, it needs to be agile, it needs to move on the fly, it needs to, to shift away from the kind of the role-based thing. So, you know, we see as a business, a lot of consumers coming to us as those IT services, like I mentioned, the backups, the virtualization, those are all pretty common. We see them coming to us for security. Mm. So inside of our suite today, we're offering them the tools to kind of build security inside of their business and application. So things like intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, log collection, um, signs of log analysis and correlation, all those tools are being developed inside of the Expedient Suite mm. so that customers can buy those on an a la carte basis. Another thing I was actually going to throw in there too, where we see it happening is we see compliance. I mean, compliance drove a lot of business towards the service providers. Things like PCI DSS, HIPAA, FDA, those types of things, those drove business to the data center. We see more of that happening on a daily basis. And I imagine we'll see some you know, greater compliance. We saw a big push on the PCI DSS front with their 3.0 release. I imagine we're going to see some uh, stricter guidelines there. Excellent. So uh, one of the things you, you said, actually maybe I want to ask you a follow-up question. When it comes to small and medium-sized businesses, you know, I think the general belief in the past has been that um, they didn't really treat security as an important part of their business. Nobody wants to come after me. I'm a small guy. Mm -hmm. you know, what do you see transforming there? Yeah, it's, it's funny. We, we used to talk about it, have all these security conversations with IT-focused people. Um, now we're seeing it with the business focused people because they've seen you know, some of the examples that we've, we've seen on the higher end of it when there's a breach or when there's a problem and now they know, okay, I don't want my job to be on the line just because as a business we didn't adopt these security policies. Okay, so everyone's taking it much more seriously. Yeah, absolutely. You have the IT folks and the business folks all in one room pushing for higher security to make sure that their customer data that they're collecting or interacting with is actually secure. That's great. Uh, so, John, Thank you for the insights. It's been a pleasure Thank you. working with you and a pleasure having you up on stage. Thank Thanks you very everybody. much.